Hello everybody and welcome to the new ECG exercise, the ECG exercise number 25 from ARIA EP Tax series. I hope you will enjoy it and join me in my future short video presentations. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. The today's ECG belongs to a 62 year old man who was admitted to the hospital because of recurrent palpitations and tachycardia. In past medical history, he experienced old inferior wall myocardial infarction. Echocardiography showed an ejection fraction of 22%. The patient then was referred for EP study and VT ablation to our center. This is the baseline ECG in sinus rhythm. When we look at the 2-3 AVF, we see a clear sign for inferior wall myocardial infarction. The question is, what is the reason to have this deflection at the end of the QRS complex? Now, let's look together to a short video for the explanation of these wave at the observed wave at the end of the QRS complex. Let's have a closer look to the ECG together. In lead 3 and also in lead AVF, we see a deep Q wave, which shows an old inferior wall myocardial infarction. The patient had an old myocardial infarction. And now the second interesting finding in this ECG is the waves that we see in all the electrodes, in all the limb lead and also precordial leads, uh, at the end of the QRS complex. And the question is, what is the reason to have these QRS deflections? So the patient has a very large inferior and infralateral wall myocardial infarction. So it takes a long time until the last part of the ventricle, which is the posterior superior part basal, will be activated because of the intense scar formation and calcification in this patient and after that the activation will show an inferior um, activation vector and exactly that's the reason that we see uh, these positive deflection in 2, 3 and also AVF and because this deflection goes directly to toward the lead tree then the most positive deflection is in lead 3 compared to lead 2 and also AVF. And as you can see, if the most positive deflection is in lead 3, then the most negative one should be in lead AVL, which we see clearly here in the ECG. Here we have the ECG on the left side during RV stimulation and you can see this delayed activity is more prominent and actually the, this deflection looks like that happens way after termination of the QRS complex. Actually it is just an apparent QRS complex and this deflection is still part of QRS complex but because of very late activation after RV stimulation. During RV stimulation, we can see the latest activation of basal infero posterior superior part of the left ventricle as a deflection, which happens way after termination of the QRS complex, which actually is a part of the QRS complex. Now, this is the clinical tachycardia of the patient. Besides from negative concordance, the clear AV dissociation in lead V2 especially is compatible with the diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia. And as you can see here, like all the patients, almost all the patients with a scar related VT, not only clinical VT, but some additional tachycardia are inducible. This is the second ventricular tachycardia compared to the first one. We have almost a positive concordance, a septal, inferoceptal, basal ventricular tachycardia. Both VT were successfully ablated and the ablation rendered the patient non-inducible. And after that, the patient received an ICD. At the end, once again, I would like to thank you for joining me in this ECG exercise, the ECG exercise number 25. I hope you enjoyed it and join me in my future video presentations. Thank you.